break these chains. I'm bound for the life of the simple things. We had a pretty good night last night. Got a good night's sleep and everything after a little bit of a hectic drive. Coming down through that pass was definitely not an easy deal. Certainly got a lot of work in there. Ended up having to drop it down to first gear there for a while to be able to get the RPMs, you know, to rev and slow the RV down. There's some spots in that pass where it was really a lot of work for the brakes. Got them kind of warm there in one spot, trying to slow down for a curve. So I learned the RV does 30, 35 down the uh, mountainside if there's any kind of twists and turns. We're about ready to go into work. So Catalina and I are both going to be basically petitioning. So she's going to be learning how to do it today. This is our RV space and we are at Pio Pico RV Resort and this here is the Thousand Trails complimentary membership side of the park. So it doesn't have a sewer hookup. There's a dump station, but no sewer hookup. We have power and water. And with that, it's a big help. We paid $539 for a year, and then we only pay $3 a night when we're, when we're staying in the RV parks. And they got RV parks from here all the way on up to uh, Canada that we can use when we're heading up north. The one big downside of this, other than not having the sewer hook up here, is a big downside of it is the fact that we can only be in here for two weeks and then we gotta stay out a week. And then we can be back in for two weeks. So we do have to stay out of the RV park one week every two weeks. So we're probably gonna use another discount club that I've looked into to fill in that other week along with a little bit of stealth camping to keep our costs down initially until we start making some good money. The way Thousand Trails works is that when you're signed up on their basic membership and you're at the Pio Pico Park here, they have two sides. One side, the south side, actually has full hookup and everything. And then the north side of it where we had been staying has basically water and power and a dump station. So you don't actually have the sewer hookup. But what they do is as spots come available, you sign up on a list to cross back over to have the sewer when there isn't like pre-existing long-term ago reservations made. And so we got to go over and so today we ended up getting to go over to the other side and have our full sewer hookup still only paying our three dollars per day so that's pretty cool it took a couple of days to get over and so now what we're doing is waiting on this long line of RVs that are going in today and Alina is in front of me here. She's pretty excited about the spot that we got. On other news, I went ahead and ordered myself a supercharger for the Kodiak here. And the reason why I ended up doing that is I wasn't really happy with the rate of charge that I was getting on the Kodiak from the regular AC adapter. I'll go over that more detail in the review, but that's cool that we got this today. Got Carolina leading the way here. Gonna go and find our little spot. These cabins are pretty cool. There is one membership, which is an upgrade from what we have, that allows you to stay in the cabins free. All right, so it looks like this is our spot here. Okay, so that looks like a back end spot. I'm gonna gonna have to pull off the trailer here before I can get in there. Yeah, I know, so I'll pop this off. I'll pull the trailer back in here and then uh, I'll back up after that.
moments like these make having this backup camera so nice. All right, so Catalina is telling me that the branch is in the way back here. Yeah, I need to pull forward a little. All right. Alright, so the leveling jacks hit the max amount that they could. This is a big slope in here and it's a back in only spot. So what I'm having Catalina do right now is grab the wooden blocks. We're going to drop the jacks, well raise them back up, <laughs> and then we're going to use these boards to give us that little bit more. I'm prepping so that it's easy as soon as the jacks come up then we can push them right up underneath there and they're close so we have a good estimate of how far it should be Imagine what that does uh, <laughs> to uh, pavement and stuff if you're putting your leveling jacks down on uh, people's asphalt when you're staying at Walmart. Don't do that. <laughs> It's been a couple of weeks here since I had even been speaking to you guys. I just got so busy having moved out here to San Diego and the new RV park and some of the things that we were doing and then also working. But we signed up for what's called Thousand Trails and we've used it for the first time. I have mixed feelings on it, but overall it was a positive and especially the cost of it versus where we are here in San Diego but right now what I'm off to do is I'm heading back out of the park we spent our two weeks at a time and now we have to be out of the thousand trail system for a week and we're cruising along Ote Lake here heading into Chula Vista we're gonna go ahead and be staying there for a little while and see how it goes this first week since we just made the relocation and paid for the membership with thousand trails and everything this first week that we're going to be out of the park we're going to be trying to do it basically we're going to be trying to do it stealth camping so and what i mean by stealth camping is just not being noticed enough to cause any issues not that you can be extremely stealth with an RV, right? It's more like stealth camping in plain sight, you know, where people aren't bothered by you or, or alarmed or anything like that. Hello, Mr. Clay. So <laughs> I finally got my mail. I hadn't gotten it in quite some time. And when I was handling the plates and registration, I went ahead and I requested all of my mail and this came in from Mr. Clay and I really appreciate it, sir. It was very nice of you. I'm sorry I didn't get it at Christmas time and then thank you then, but thank you so much. We decided to just go ahead and stay here tonight. We're gonna go do some laundry that's close by. And I got my trusty old uh, Kodiak friend here. Gonna plug it in and make sure we have power, make sure we get the uh, batteries that are part of this coach topped off they're about dead already so I'm gonna try to bring them back alive 
by uh, trying some desulfonation and then uh, also I know it says not to but I'm gonna see if adding some electrolyte will help me out so I figure where they are right now is pretty much dead if the desulfonation process doesn't really work I figure they're om they're almost dead anyways what the heck if I do some electrolyte doping and maybe I can bring them back or something there we are we got the Kodiak in there running and uh, I think it's pulling pretty hard so I'm thinking that I must have had the fridge on auto instead of on uh, gas so I'm gonna go in and turn the fridge to gas so we don't suck too much power because it's really putting a pull expected two to three hundred watts because I figured it was gonna start charging the batteries on the coach right away yeah sure enough I had it on auto instead of gas there we go gas it's much better <laughs> yep that's exactly what it was so she's down under 200 watts now an hour charging up those coach batteries that uh, have been draining all day get out there connect with people live your big story and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck peace it's guys been a long day without you my friend and I tell you all about it when I see you again We come a long way from where we began Oh, I'll tell you all 